We all know that everything in real estate is negotiable, at least if you're a real estate agent, builder, or an experienced buyer who's bought a property or two here or there. Today, we're going to talk about the things that should be in a contract to make your contract lender friendly. First things first, be sure to subscribe to all of my social media channels at Let's Talk Mortgage Pro. So the first thing that we want to avoid is having a dollar amount in the non-realty items section of the contract. Non-realty items include things like TVs, refrigerators, washer, dryers, patio furniture, barbecue pits, things like that. If there's a dollar amount listed in there in most loan types, what this means is that there's a dollar for dollar reduction in the sales price. So just stick a zero in there, make things a lot easier on yourself and everybody else. The second thing is a residential leaseback. While of course the buyer can move in early before closing or the seller can leave the property after closing in a certain amount of time, the buyer must occupy that property on a second home or primary residence within 60 days of closing. So if your lease back is longer than 60 days and it's not an investment property, this is not going to work for your financing. So be sure to write those residential lease backs for no more than 60 days. The next thing is seller concessions. Now each loan type has a maximum amount of seller closing costs that they can pay on behalf of the buyer. So be sure that you check those limits and I'll be sure to do another video on those limits. So everybody knows what to expect there. We don't ever want to have money left on the table from seller paid closing cost. The next thing is the survey. So who's paying for it? Is there an existing one? And that this of course is in survey states as not all states have surveys requirements, but it's really important to know upfront and early on if the survey is going to be acceptable or even available. The next thing the contracts don't talk about, which I think is really important for everybody to be aware of is flipped properties. That means that the property has not been owned by the current owner for more than 90 days. In some cases, 12 months depends on the loan that you're doing. But in most cases, if the property has not been owned by the seller for more than 90 days, it could be a problem with certain types of financing like FHA. In most of the other loan types, it doesn't matter, but it sure is nice to know as a lender that this is a flip. The next thing is a mail out or a power of attorney. Lenders need to know upfront and early on if it's going to turn into a power of attorney or a mail away closing. This is because we have to prepare for these things and get forms signed up front and ahead of time and over to the title company, not just the loan documents. The next thing is a septic or a well. If your property is on a septic or a well, we have to have septic or well inspections and we need to know early on if this is the case. And the last thing I want to talk about are things like ag exemptions and things that are on the property like mobile homes that may not prove to be really attractive when you're looking at the property. So be sure to know exactly what's on your property to make sure it's not going to be a problem when it comes to financing.